Aquariums take a lot of dedication and fish should not be thought of as disposable pets. Please don't rely solely on my information or replicating my methods or setup. If you're considering starting an aquarium, please consult a professional at an aquatic store and consider joining online aquatics forums where you can ask questions and receive help from experienced hobbyists. Hey, what's up creatures? It's Em. I have decided to start a saltwater aquarium. A saltwater aquarium. Now, I might sound a little bit more enthusiastic if I wasn't absolutely terrified. I hope you enjoy this part one to my aquarium setup video. Stay until the end where I'll be talking to an aquatic specialist from London's premier aquatic shop, the Aquatic Design Centre. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss next week's video, which will be a tank update featuring a very special guest who you might already know. You know when people do close-up videos of squeezing the pores around their nostrils? <laughs> That's what they look like. I can never look at them the same way again. Enjoy the video and be sure to get involved by leaving your top tips or recommendations for my setup in the comment section below. Opinions and debates are most welcome, but any foul language will be deleted. Today's video is sponsored by Runaway. Runaway developed these really immersive apps and they're all nature based. I've been playing Splash. 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 Splash is a stunning ocean adventure game where your mission is to care for an underwater sanctuary and repopulate the reef. The app features real species of fish and by raising fish and feeding them the correct foods, you can establish various species and unlock new, rarer marine creatures to learn facts about, hatch, raise, care for and release. Collect and position coral to help you collect coins and food and unlock new parts of the reef to increase how many fish you can raise at once. I want to see your reef. If you're also playing, take a snap of your reef and send it to me on Twitter. You can also show off your reef by tagging the official Splash Twitter, at PlaySplashGame. You might even get a retweet. If you want to join in, you can download Splash for free. Search for Splash in your app store to unlock a free underwater paradise. Check out my description box below for more details. I might sound a little bit more enthusiastic if I wasn't absolutely terrified literally terrified because i am by no means an aquatic specialist just for my own interest i want to have a go at keeping salt water there are no species that i'm interested in enough to want to keep at home in 150 to 200 250 gallon so i decided to go completely the opposite way i decided to go Nano. Now I know that sounds really cute like oh a nano aquarium that must be really easy to look after <laughs> No, no, no with nano aquariums. Um, yes, you save on space But they take a lot of upkeep and by a lot of upkeep. I mean a lot of upkeep There are definitely pros and cons to keeping nano aquariums Some of the pros are the setup costs so large aquariums such as 250 gallon aquariums can start at around $700 for just the tank not including the water testing kits, the live rock, the coral, the anemones, the reverse osmosis water, salts, filtration pumps, and not to mention the fish themselves. Um, nanos will cost you less in space and the initial setup, and they'll also be likely to take less time to do water changes for. But there's also the cons, and it's really important to consider the cons. Changes in a nano tank will always be very fast. So if your water quality isn't right, you'll see the negative effects of this very very quickly ultimately the decision is yours as to whether to go for a nano or a large aquarium but take into consideration more than just the setup and running costs so I'm trying to take things slow I haven't got my aquarium yet but tomorrow I'm going to be going to a place in New Jersey called absolutely fish and they usually have display tanks which are set up and actually for sale so my plan my cunning plan, which which may or may not work out in my favour, is actually to go and buy an established aquarium. The thought of moving a saltwater aquarium from one place to another just makes me cringe down to my bones because there's so much that can go wrong. You know, the coral can get cold, the fish can get cold. Oh my God. So I will see you tomorrow when I go and pick up a tank. 
It's cold. If only I could actually keep coral that beautiful and with those eggs. Oh, let me go see what I can go and find in the store. Look, it's my turtle. Okay, so I just arrived at Absolutely Fish over there and Danny's out here pacing because he thought that was gonna get straight out of the car. <laughs> okay, I'm coming. What? So many corals. Who's your friend, Danny? Um. I don't know, he's really feathery and cool. Oh, you like that one? Yes. That's cool, I like it. Wow, so hypnotic. Oh my goodness. Wow. I'm really sorry but I don't have any footage of me actually driving home from the fish store because I was holding on to everything in the back of the car just trying to make sure that everything and everyone was happy. So here we go, this is when we got home and we started to set up the aquarium. All right, so we literally just got home. What we're doing right now is we're going to put together some of this living rock. Living or live rock is not actually alive itself but it's made from the skeletons of dead coral. Many microscopic organisms can be found living on the rock, giving it its name. Live rock has many benefits in a reef aquarium, not only as a platform from which to build your reef on, but also because it can have a stabilizing effect on the water's pH. This water is from the same system that the aquarium that we have here at home was being supported by in the store. So this water has already been pre-tested. It's got perfect salinity, perfect pH levels. Everything was tested. We're just going to slowly add it and bring it up to temperature. Here I am slowly adding the water into the tank. I'm angling the current to the back of the tank so as not to kick up all the sand and cloud the water too much as this could upset the coral and the anemone. Here's the tank one hour after I built up the rock and positioned the coral and anemone. I had to work quite quickly, but I decided to try and replicate where each of the coral frags was when it was in the store on display. As you can see, the water is still cloudy and the coral are not yet completely relaxed. These clownfish were captive bred by Absolutely Fish and were living in a nursery reef tank with lots of other clownfish of a similar size. Initially, I wanted a maroon because of the colour, but I didn't realise how large maroons could grow. The store totally advised me against the maroon because not only would they be too big for this tank, but apparently they can also be pretty aggressive to their tank mates such as the cleanup crew invertebrates. Not all clownfish will grow to be the same size, so do double check with your aquarist to make sure that the species you like is suitable for your tank. Alright creatures, so it's been about, I want to say about four hours now since we set up the tank, maybe three hours, and uh, as you can see, all of the coral and the anemones have started to unfurl a bit more, they're settled in just that little bit more. I'm really surprised by this one down here. Let me see if I can just focus. Look at that beautiful aquamarine color. I didn't even notice it when we put it in, but there it is. It's absolutely beautiful. It almost looks bioluminescent. And then we go up here, and I'm not sure about this coral fragment right here. I think I might actually move that one. Of course, there was a, a little bit of upset, you know, putting everything around and jostling and reassembling. So there is some, some mucus and some slime left over um, from where everything was stinging everything uh, but hopefully everything's gonna settle down um, uh, and of course you guys will have seen these beautiful fish over here, my clownfish. Um, now, with these clownfish, I just wanted to make it absolutely positive and, and say that these two are actually captive bred. Um, I don't know if you are aware, but when it comes to a lot of marine life, especially um, fish, uh, corals as well, come to think of it, a lot are actually collected from the wild. But recently, in recent years, um, captive breeding efforts of clownfish have been just incredible. And 
there have been some beautiful morphs created. Um, I personally am a massive fan of just the traditional classic clownfish um, as we can see over here um, but these ones are captive bred and they are captive bred by a place that we actually got the tank from which is a place in New Jersey called Absolutely Fish and honestly just I'm so impressed with their standards in there. I had zero guilt bringing these two home. I thought they were absolutely wonderful. Along with getting the clownfish and obviously the aquarium set up I got a couple of other things to help out with this tank and uh, number one probably one of the most important things a really important thing to have is a good hydrometer because this is what's going to measure the salinity of the water. On hydrometer gauges you'll see this little darker area to the side here. This is where you want the salinity gauge to point to when you measure your tank salinity because the average ocean salinity is 35 parts per thousand. So very very important we've got that over here on hand. With a salt water aquarium your water is constantly evaporating just poof gone into thin air. <laughs> so you're going to want to measure your salinity levels every single day especially if you have a nano tank because nano tanks are going to have really horrible um, side effects if you allow too much water to evaporate and you're left with a very high salinity level so I'm using the hydrometer here just to measure the salinity level it is bang on 35 it's maybe slightly more towards 36 parts per thousand so we're around about where we need to be given that it should be at around 35 parts per thousand um, obviously this is the next next day so some water has evaporated so with a tank which has salt water you're going to want to set up external buckets where you can actually mix salt water we actually use reverse osmosis water at home which we get from um absolutely fish so that's uh, a lot of fun right there but just remember to keep on top of looking at your hydrometer because you would be astounded how quickly your water is going to evaporate and leave lots of salt behind the other thing that i brought home with me is this two-step um <clears throat> excuse me calcium buffer system a good calcium buffer system is essential to balance your calcium and your alkalinity levels coral are constantly extracting calcium from the water to build their exoskeletons so maintaining the correct level of calcium and alkalinity is key. There are lots of calcium buffer systems on the market so make sure to always read the instructions for the correct dosages because they will definitely differ from product to product. This salt came highly recommended. Because Danny please don't. <laughs> I can't show that kind of stuff on my channel, baby. And then I actually got some of this Pro Reef Sea Salt. Now, not all salts are the same when you go to a pet store or to an aquatic store. Um, here at home, we actually do have a mud skipper who uses a different kind of salt because he's in brackish water. But this sea salt has lots of trace elements of, you know, calcium and lots of other things that you'd find actually in the sea. And that's really important because um, obviously in here we have lots of coral and anemones. And with coral, they do require calcium to grow because otherwise they're literally just in water with nothing else but remember coral does grow and they need to have their own nutrients their own food and that's something that you can actually find in this um, the tropic marine and this is what came highly recommended by the actual guys in the aquatic store as far as food for the clownfish go um, I am happy to feed them a pellet food as well as giving them some live food every now and then oh look at them what's that did you just fight over that that was a lot of fun um, and I actually picked up um, some food at the aquatic store store which I thought you know it has you know clownfish on the front obviously it's great for the clownfish and then the guy at the checkout he was like excuse me uh listen you don't want to feed that to your clownfish because although there's clownfish on the front it sucks so he basically pointed out this to me um which is let me see where it is it is the sake hikari marine carnivore diet a unique blended probiotics enhanced formulation a superior taste readily accepted by most marine species a rapidly assimilated nutrient mix and it's a sinking type oh now i'm not going to pretend to know anything about this because i have never heard about it in my life but the guys in the store i do absolutely trust them and they did say that this was absolutely wonderful they actually get it shipped over from japan i'm gonna see how they go with this um it looks very promising i mean hey just from a packaging point of view it's gorgeous and i approve of it hopefully the fish will approve of it and they'll be nice and healthy because of it um have you guys ever used this brand before let me know in the comment section down below if you have and your thoughts about it or if you feed your um, clownfish any other food that really works please let me know I would love to know and try them on as many different foods as possible to see what they really like and what they can flourish on
Along with the coral, anemone, live rock and fish, this tank also came with its own cleanup crew. This is a Nasaria snail. They're docile and spend most of their time burrowed in the sand. As soon as they smell food, they rise up out of the reef bed like zombies and zoom around at quite a fast pace around the tank to find the food source. As per my usual crazy life, I've pre-filmed my tank in America, but I'm currently in London. Whilst I'm here, I thought I'd ask one of the experts at the Aquatic Design Centre some questions which could be useful for you if you're considering keeping fish. I'm Tony and I work at the Aquatic Design Centre. I'm a freshwater livestock manager, so I'm here running the shop and general fish keeping basically. 25 years-ish, maybe more. I've got a couple of questions to ask you. Are you happy for me to ask you those questions? When I find out what they are, yeah. <laughs> what are some of the first considerations when deciding whether or not to dive into the world of fish keeping? First considerations are whether or not you're really that interested and just be aware of the costs and what have you and the fact that looking after an animal doesn't necessarily have to be a full-time job but it's going to take up a fair amount of your time so you've got to make sure you've got the time to do that really. What are some of the most common pitfalls you see new aquarists falling into? Rushing. 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 Being too quick. Fish keeping is a very slow hobby. Put it that way in, in amongst our busy lives these days and everything. Go, go, go. Fish keeping is one thing you can just sit back and go relax. Okay, the slower you go with fish keeping, the better you'll be. Um, generally speaking, anything good in fish keeping takes time. Anything bad is going to happen overnight. So just take your time with it, enjoy it, don't rush it because people who rush it always end up doing it wrong or doing something. For example, buying a tank and within a week we put fish in it and that's always a no-no. Most aquariums will generally take four or five weeks to fully settle down before the fish are actually able to be introduced to it um, and you'll spend the next few weeks then stopping the aquarium um, and in that time it's a good time of course to pick up a book or go online and try and, try and do a little bit of research you know, whilst the tank's maturing, whilst it's setting up. Which freshwater fish would you recommend for a first time fish keeper? So neon tetras, uh, guppies and platies, that sort of thing. Um, various small barbs and the barames and the raspberries. There's so many to choose from. There is quite a trend for small or nano salt water tanks right now. What are some of the difficulties in keeping a nano salt water tank? Stability of environment is the biggest thing with a small fish tank. The oceans are huge, they're vast. Um, and they're very clean. I mean, the tropical oceans are extremely clean. The animals and organisms that come from there are used to these very, very clean, stable environments. Uh, a small aquarium, in terms of um, its water quality, is very unstable. You get a lot of fluctuations. Evaporation, of course, uh, will, will increase the salinity. So your salinity is always bouncing up and down. Your organic levels will build up almost straight away in a smaller volume of water. In a larger tank you've got more dilution so things change slower and the organisms can adapt quicker or, 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 or adapt at a more leisurely pace though. Um, and of course you've got time to compensate for these little changes. Goldfish and betta seem to be some of the most popular choices of fish. How long can a well cared for goldfish live and how long can a well cared betta fish live for? It's debatable. Um, goldfish, uh, as far as I know, the oldest one on record was 43. Um, I would expect anywhere between 15 and 25 years to be pretty decent. Um, sad truth is most goldfish don't live much beyond 10 years in captivity uh, and the very unlucky ones those that are still kept in bowls and stuff like that, um, end up living you know, just a few short months, which is really sad considering it could be a pet for life uh, if you do it right. Uh, Siamese fighting fish, on the other hand, are a relatively short-lived animal, um, somewhere between a year and a half, maybe three or four years if you get a very good one who's, who's resilient. Um, don't forget also, I mean, in the wild, so fighting fish, sick or dying animals, they get picked off pretty quickly. You know, if, if they get to a certain age, they can't fend for themselves, they're eaten, they're taken care of. Um, and somehow this, this, uh, this uh, sort of way of life is also ingrained into captive animals and it, it's, it, they get to a certain point, it's their time to go and they just do you know, that, it. It's kind of bizarre how that happens. As someone who works in a specialist aquatic shop, what message would you like to send to people who may be considering an aquarium? Um, think, right, just whatever animal you're keeping, whether it's fish or rabbits, guinea pigs, Think about the animal before you buy it and do a bit of research about it, okay? It doesn't take long, it's not hard work just to pick up a book or even go online or chat to some people and just try and figure out what it is you're actually trying to do. 
So I've been playing this app called Splash. Right. I want to get your opinion, who is someone professional okay. in the world of fish keeping, mm -hmm. as to what you think of my aquarium and how, how it's looking. It's actually a reef. Right. Very nice. Yeah? Uh, yeah, it's nice. Uh, I wouldn't trust the cuttlefish. No? No, no, no. Don't trust the cuttlefish? Don't trust the cuttlefish. Well, in real life, they're, they're a predatory critter and they'll, they'll chew anything. <laughs> um, it's, it's all very looking very pretty. and They're all hungry, you see. They're all hanging out by the food right. bowl. Yep. I have yep. the barber pole goby. Yep. And I also have the watchman, watchman. goby. They're a nice fish, yep. And uh, who else do I have in here? Yeah, I've had... A few butterfly fish or something. Yes. Sort there. And, I mean, if, if you're completely nerdy about fish and you can't get away from them, then this uh -huh. is ideal for dogs. What do you rate my reef out of 10? Oh, go on, I'll be kind. I'll give you a full 10. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm sure Splash is going to be happy to yeah. hear that too. Yeah, it's a very pretty aquarium. Thank you so much to Tony and the whole team at the Aquatic Design Centre in London for answering my questions about fish keeping. You can find out more about the Aquatic Design Centre and how to visit in my description box and see more of their incredible collection in my upcoming vlog, so subscribe to my vlogging channel. So far, so good with my tank in this week's video, but next week things get a little challenging. I'll be conducting a routine water test in my aquarium update video to show you how I test for the pH and ammonia, and I'll be talking about some of the difficulties I've encountered so far. I'll also be talking to the amazing Jenny from Solid Gold Aquatics about fish keeping, so be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so as not to miss that upload. Thanks again to Splash for sponsoring this video. Go and check out their beautiful app down below in my description box. Show them some love over on Twitter over here. And I will see you guys in another video soon. Bye!